In this video, we will see the primary function of cube DNS. Okay, for this, we'll create a container out of the image of Alpine and we'll create a pot uh, directly from this image and we'll get a shell inside. So, this will do with the image of Alpine version 3.15.5 and uh, we'll call it uh, mine Alpine pot and we'll execute the shell afterwards. We're doing everything from the Kubernetes uh, shell. So this will download the image for us and uh, here we are inside of the system. Okay, let's uh, try to send a request, uh, for example, to GitHub in order to see if our resolver or DNS uh, server is working. So type nslookup uh, github.com. Uh, we are having uh, this answer uh, just because inside of the container it's pointed to send queries to the Google DNS server and now in another tab I'll get all the services here and uh, we see our pod is here and um, by default we have one service which is called Kubernetes and we should be able by its name uh, to resolve it and to have its, uh, for example, cluster IP address. And uh, if I again try to look up this address with nslookup Kubernetes, uh, we see that uh, it's querying again the Google service and uh, of course you cannot find uh, the Kubernetes service because it's local to the cluster. So one solution for this is for us to enable the core DNS service and it's an add-on so we can type uh, microcat as enable DNS little by little it will be enabled and we'll be able to again see what will be the answers of our DNS queries so right now we'll see this service cube DNS answering to queries on port 53 TCP UDP and also some diagnostics for Prometheus on another port. So let's wait a little bit until the container is running. And the next thing is for it to be accepted and uh, used by our port is just to restart the port, for example. I'll type microcat as kubectl delete port pine port and then I'll just recreate it. Okay, once again, rerunning it. All right, so let's and now see what's inside of our resolve conf. And we see that this pod is actually using the name server with this address. If we go ahead and check our kubedns service, we see that as the same address so automatically um, when the port is being created and the DNS service is uh, being present it gets the data from there so we no longer are requesting uh, DNS uh, data from uh, Google service uh, which means that uh, again I can uh, reach uh, github and this is the answer from our service the difference now is uh, when we try to get access to our local services. So I'll type nslookup Kubernetes. We can see that we are querying the DNS server and it's returning the following address. The name of the service, also the default namespace uh, where it's placed, uh, and of course the information about our cluster, as well as its address. This way pods uh, and uh, of course the containers uh, can communicate uh, between each other uh, while using services and they can be resolved by their names. Uh, right now we see that our cube DNS is also having from the output uh, we can also see that cube DNS uh, has also uh, deployment and uh, a replica set and we can scale down this replica set to see what happens if our uh, cube DNS is disabled once again. So Basically, we would like this uh, core DNS uh, to be scaled down to uh, zero. 
and uh, everything happens in the namespace of uh, cube system. So let's uh, run uh, the command and uh, let's see again. Now we don't have core DNS uh, replica sets. This means that uh, also we don't have deployments and uh, as you can see our pod with core DNS is being terminating. Let's see now. Uh, we don't have connection to our DNS server. Also, we can try to see the configuration of our core DNS. It's saved inside of the config map, so we will be describing it, and that's the contents of it. We are responding to all the domains, and uh, here first uh, we're using the Kubernetes uh, plugin, which uh, resolves all the local services. Afterwards, uh, we're resolving the local IP addresses for the cluster and then for everything that's uh, concerning the internet, uh, we just uh, pass it through. And uh, that's basically the configuration file, which you can change and uh, restart the deployment and you have it automatically configured. All right, that's how the core DNS uh, functions inside of uh, Kubernetes. I hope you enjoyed the information. Thank you.